And welcome to our next chapter that is going to um, involve creating an outdoor kitchen space uh, in our design that we've been using to demonstrate um, creating outdoor living space. The uh, curved patio that um, is at the bottom of the stairs on the uh, back right corner of the plan as we look at this in the backyard is going to where we're going to design this from. If I jump into the site plan drawing, we can see this is the uh, area that we have um, created. And as I zoom this up and perhaps even come in and use the dimension command at this stage, I can see that I'm approximately seven foot two inches in width. Because of the design and the, the direction we want to go, uh, it's not unusual for a design to, to morph um, to meet the client's needs. And so in this case here, I'd actually like to create a larger cutout for this that would allow us to um, create a, a, uh, a long kitchen uh, island out here that's going to allow for a grill a refrigerator and even an outdoor sink. We'll possibly even set this up to have a breakfast bar type scenario or a raised counter for this to, to, uh, to work from. So with that said, what I'm going to do inside this the site mode is actually come in and explode the existing polygon. Um, the polygon, which is the interior, the inside patio um, relative to the curb here. And so selecting miscellaneous and explode, will, when I do this, is going to break it down into lines. This would now allow me to come in and actually modify this dimension if need be. And I could simply select what the new dimension is going to be and then adjust it or widen it per se. When I do this, I'm truly just dealing with lines at this stage. And so I will need to come in and obviously fix some of these lines that are here. And so as I begin to, to work with this, and I'm just removing a little bit of the detail around there with the dimension and construction points from an earlier lesson, but I can come in using tool and follow by fill it and then just simply click on each of the two lines or in this case the arc in the line in order to form that corner. And so again I'm going to erase these lines here and then using the keyboard shortcut for fill it which is the letter F I can click on the two lines in order to form that, that, um, that shape or that corner right there. At this stage now, in order to turn this back into a polygon per se, okay, so that it will show inside 3D, I can come in through the, the uh, edit function and the form polygon. At this stage now, I will simply click on each of the lines that make up the um, perimeter of the interior patio and then right click. And when I do that, as I now edit this, it will actually list as a, um, an actual three-dimensional site shape. And so if I were to come back into 3D now, here is our patio. And of course, at this stage now, I would just simply need to edit this and um, give it a dimension of where I want this relative to the curb that we created. And so just pushing it down into the actual curb itself. And so this gives us, for all intents and purposes, a much larger area now that we could work with as far as the patio is concerned. And so returning back into the site plan, I could even adjust you know, this at this stage to create a larger area to place the cabinetry and so on in. With the patio area now adjusted to accommodate a larger area for cooking, the next step that we're going to do is go in and create the kitchen cabinet area that's going to take place for this outdoor kitchen. And so changing modes into drawing mode, this is where we're going to draw cabinets from. It's a, a um, derivative of the drawing area. And so as such, when we change into the drawing mode, of course, one of the things that turns off would be the site plan. What we're going to do is just, um, in this case, go in through options and visible items and then within the drawing mode we can override the defaults and turn on the curb as well as the patio so that we can actually see them within the drawing mode. Zooming this area up now, I will be able to go in and begin to define this out. Selecting draw and selecting cabinet, I'm at this stage just going to go in and select the base cabinet. 
Now when I do this, uh, the, the configure cabinet library dialog is going to open up and one of the things that you will see here is of course that we're going to you know have the type of cabinet, in this case a base cabinet, the shape of the cabinet and you'll see that depending on what you're attempting to do you've, you'll have the ability to, to go in and define runs of cabinets at different shapes and sizes on the, the, the plan itself and then under the um, cabinet face you'll be able to select the different types of default face plates or panels that are going that could be used and in this case I'm going to select the flat panel um, for the outdoor cabinets and under face layout you would then be able to go in and select the define or define the, the default and we've got a number of predefined settings that are already in there including um, you know door and drawers and combinations etc so in this case when I select something like this and, and select OK I would then be able to go in and select uh, at this stage the default width for that so I can pick the dimension on the cabinet pick the um, uh, what the face plate is going to look like and once I've done that with the 18 inches and door and drawer panel I can then position my cursor where I wish to have this drawn and click from the rear of the cabinet towards the front and click at this stage it drops the cabinet in there and I'm more concerned with the layout right now and then I'll dimension this specifically into place so once I have done this I will come back to the um, list of cabinets that are here select the width of the cabinet and in this case now select to have a double door cabinet so 36 inches in width standard two door click at the rear of the cabinet and draw towards the house and the two cabinets will be snapped or fastened to one another and so once again I could do the same thing click to start click towards the house so rear to front and place it down and now I'll select a 24 inch which is where we're going to basically place the refrigerator and click to insert it and then finally we'll um, bookend this with another 18 inch door and drawer cabinet and click to insert it now this can be moved in as far as plan is concerned and I can set that down wherever I'd like that to be I can also rather than doing the whole thing by eye come in through dimension and select the dimension option ensuring that my symbol dimension is on I can then click and add dimensions between the cabinets and the site and you'll see the dimensions are pulled this would allow me to now come in through the edit item feature and I could edit from the site to the edge of the cabinet and set up um, the border or the perimeter as far as the patio is concerned all the way around as I take a look at this inside 3D we see what we have for the cabinets themselves and so I'm just adjusting the camera here uh, to be able to view and right now it can be seen that the cabinets are floating in the air remember we offset the site down we fit the patio to the site which was offset down so in this case here now I'm just going to move this by eye for now down to the actual patio itself so that it sits on top or in, a, in essence offset it or edit that offset to push it down at this time alright with this set up in place now what we're really looking to do is fill this cabinet out and so ultimately long term we're going to place a outdoor cooking uh, grill we're going to place a sink and then we're going to also insert a refrigerator uh, to the outdoor um, kitchen that we have here I'm going to do most of this from within the floor plan but what I will do is once again I'm going to right click on the 3D shaded tab and move that to its own vertical tab group and this will allow us to see the um, kitchen unfold inside 3D as we draw within the, the plan over here and so coming back to the site plan and zooming this up again I am in drawing mode right now I'm just going to you know zoom this area up here and let me just uh, moving my um, in 3d just uh, offset my cabinets just a little bit so I'm gonna just push those back using the dimensions to keep them accurate and now using the miscellaneous 
and explode option, the same function that I used to explode the patio into individual lines and then later I use the poly group polygon to bring it back together, I'm going to just click on my cabinets once to break them into individual pieces so that I can see what I'm dealing with. Um, a cleanup will put these back together as one unit uh, when we get to that point. Using the uh, draw option, uh, inside the, the site plan, looking at it from a drawing mode, I can now select symbol and pull up the list of symbols. Underneath the list of manufacturers, going to the KitchenAid library and outdoor appliances, I have a complete list of outdoor appliances that I can use inside the, um, the, 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 uh, the model that I'm working with. So in this case here, if I select the 36 inch outdoor grill, and I'm going to turn my snap feature on just to find the um, center of the cabinet. I'm going to position my cursor, run my cursor towards the house and click. And uh, as I do that, I, it will appear over here inside 3D. And so right now what we can see is this, as far as the offset's concerned, I'm actually just going to move this up to sit on top of the cabinet. And my my um, intention to snap it to the center was all uh, it, it actually did center but it took into account the um, rotisserie spit over here and so I'm actually just going to move it ever so slightly to align up with with the cabinet I'm going to edit the next cabinet over and, ju and just do an edit on it and here I'm just going to click on sync and at this point, I would actually be able to go in and um, set up a sink inside the cabinet for uh, use in the outdoors. And, and really for what we're doing here, um, I'm just looking for a small sink, something that's maybe already got a faucet uh, you know, uh, applied and, and assigned to it. And so when I click OK on this, it will show up at the center point of the, uh, of the cabinets. And I will you know, take a... a, a uh, orbit around so that we can take a look at that sink being inserted into the cabinets here. Lastly, I'm going to edit over here inside 3D and I'm going to select the replace cabinet option. Returning to the manufacturer and once again going back to the KitchenAid and to the outdoor appliances, okay, this is where we can find our, our you know, other options that we could use such as an ice cube maker or trash drawer or in this case I'm going to go to an under counter refrigerator. And so depending on what the option is that we're looking for, we can select that option and then select OK and have it inserted directly into the uh, run of, of um, cabinet that we have there, replacing the cabinet, and we can see the countertop continues to, to, to run across the top. The next step in what's going to evolve into a fully covered kitchen area here is going to be adding the pergola that will be built from columns as well as some some deck joist components um, but one of the things that I want to do is actually go in and modify the cabinets um, and just take them out of what is called cleanup and to do this you simply do an edit on this and if you go to the common tab you can remove it from cleanup now the reason for this is I want to um, make sure that as I'm placing floor joist items in such as the deck items I don't accidentally have the cabinets offsetting to find joists which um, can, can kind of disrupt the flow of what we're doing so by removing it from cleanup I'm now taking responsibility for the cabinets elevation in plan and so that's what I've done at this stage is I've, I've basically gone in and I've now got these cabinets sitting where I want them to be and I don't want them to necessarily um, snap to the, the, uh, the joist I'm about to draw in. Once I've done this I can now come in through draw and in the um, plan view I'm going to select deck and then I'm going to come down and select the beam option. From the list of beams that are here, I can select you know what it is that I want to draw. So in this case here, let's say um, uh, two two by eight pressure treated plates running you know, is what I'm going to use to run horizontally on this design. And so I'll click OK and then position my cursor where I want to draw this beam. And I'm, once I get that set, I'm just going to click to start and run it clear across and click to finish. And you'll see that the, the beam is actually dropped in and is actually sitting down um, you know, relative to the, the, the ground at this stage. So I'm going to edit this 
and when I do that I can come in and actually modify the actual offset of this beam and so I'm going to type in seven foot six inches to push it up into the air while I'm there um, I can actually assign a profile to that and so what it would do is is it basically just want to override it from a plumb to a profile and when I do that I can pick from any of the predefined options that are there and in this case there are three but you'll have the option of going in and defining your own as well and so with this set in place um, I'm also going to just remove it from cleanup so that it stays you know where it is elevationally speaking on the plan and so we now have this beam floating in the air at this point now the next thing that I may want to do and, and I can kind of do this in, in um, varying orders is I can place the posts underneath or I can place the joists and work with those and, and it's kind of um, in this case six one half dozen the other so what I will do is is dealing with the deck option I'm gonna come back here and select deck components and from the list of deck components I'm going to pick joist and so that with that being the only option there I'm just going to uh, sketch the perimeter of where I would like the deck joist placed and once again as I do that you'll see the deck joists are going to be placed relative to the zero line I can then edit these deck joists and when I've done an edit on these, I can go in and change the uh, depth of the, the, the joists themselves. I can change the spacing if I want it to be something other than what it is. And I can even now go in and assign a different level number and so on in order to create the, the offset or push the deck joist relative to the, uh, the plan. And the level is going to be important. If you recall, if I click OK on this for just a second, um, it's actually not important. And so at this stage then what I will do is, is select the draw deck and I will select the deck components with joist and click OK. And I'm just going to zoom it up in the plan view and at this point now just simply sketch where I want the deck joist placed and so I will draw this all the way around the perimeter at this point and this can be adjusted after the fact as well but when I close the, para the, the um, perimeter we'll see that we've got some deck joists here in the 3D and if I edit these deck joists we'll get the dimensions that are being used now things like the hangers that you see I can turn those off I can also go in and change the depth on this so let's say five and a half inches is something that we want to use and I could even change what the um, spacing is going to be on this uh, so maybe taking it down to 12 inches just to create a little more uh, shade and so on long term and then on the uh, ends I could actually change it to profile and as you modify this to profile you'll actually be able to go in and pro you know change the default profile for what you want to use most importantly what we'll need to do now is actually go in and change in this case what the offset is going to be on this and so pending what we've got as far as the height is concerned here if I come in and type in let's say 7 foot 11 and a half inches we will push these deck joists up but still have them notching into the top of the uh, beam that I've got there and so as I take a look at this now we can see how that um, is going to work as far as floating uh, right now so again we're going to add posts into this in just a second um, for the plan view you can edit the actual um, joists themselves and turn off the border if you find that uh, confusing for any reason just simply by removing the checkbox I'm going to save this. I'm going to come back in to draw and deck, and this time I'm going to draw a single deck joist. And so in this case here, I'm just going to position my cursor where I want the single deck joist to be drawn, and again, I'm going to run it left to right. And in this case here, I'm going to edit this deck joist, and now I'm going to uh, change the level number on this from a 1 to a 2 because it's going to have a different structural component than this deck joist here and I'm going to change the depth on this to actually be one and a half inches and it's um, so that it's more of a, a two by two that we're going to be placing atop this uh, set of joists that are right here 
And if you recall, I set this in at seven foot 11 and a half, and then we've got another, you know, five and a half inches on top of that that's going to be listed there. And so with that in mind, I will edit the uh, actual joist itself. And I will edit the offset of the joist to eight foot five inches to push it up. And I'm also going to go in and remove those same joist hangers that we had showing there. Zooming this up now, I can actually come in and using the tools and the offset tool, I could click on that one by or two by two and determine that I want these placed whatever that distance may be. So let's say eight inches or six inches, depending on you know how much shade we're attempting to create. And that'll be the center to center. And as I change the number on this, it's going to go ahead and place them on. And so lastly, I could just simply move these back and forth depending on where I want them to be placed. Or in this case here, even just erase the last one that's maybe overhanging just a little too far on this. And so I've got something like this created. And so with this setup now, I'm just going to come in and actually add the posts in that will support the, um, the pergola that we've got you know, being created above the top of the, the actual kitchen itself. With the pergola in place, the next thing we'll do is we'll come in here and simply add some posts to support it. And so using the draw and post feature, you can draw everything from decorative style posts through structural, and we've got a series of manufacturers in there as well. In this case here, selecting the 4x4 pressure treated post, I'm going to position my cursor under the actual um, beam itself, and then just using the F11 function key, I can actually turn the snap feature on to make sure that it snaps directly underneath the beam itself. Inside 3D, we can see what we have, and of course at this stage now, we need to simply come in and modify the heights and the offsets of this. I'm going to begin by removing the pad on the post that I'm modifying because I don't necessarily need one there. And then coming up to the, to the um, actual uh, common tab, I can go in and modify the offset for where I want this to actually be placed so it's sitting atop the counter. And then finally, I could select the adjust height to fit the beam and it will build the, the actual dimension for me. And I could then come over and repeat edit that same change on this uh, right post here. And so now we actually have the settings set up for the, um, for the kitchen as well as the posts and the pergolas. And as I've said, we'll get to options such as the colors and so on you know, in, in, in due time. And so the last thing that I'm going to do uh, here is we're just going to go in and we're going to actually place a, a wall that eventually will have maybe some sort of a, a stone exterior to it uh, with a countertop sitting on top for, for people to stand at and, and, and to be working with. And so if I come in and I'm just going to uh, select File and I'm going to select Drawing Options and Drawing Options. And in this option here, I can actually come in and define my own wall. And so while we've got a host of block walls and so on that could be used because of their thickness and so on, I'm actually going to come in and create my own new wall at this stage. And it's just going to be a four inch, you know, uh, stone veneer wall, if you will, for what we're doing. And so once I've, you know, selected that and, and, and you know, assigned it, I can now come in and change the thickness on this to four inches. The height I'll leave at eight feet. That's, you know, I could define it to be something less, but I know that I can always edit it after the fact. And now I'm just going to scroll down the list of materials that are available here, looking for the, the stone option. And in this case, I'll select stone man-made. I can select from this what I want this to look like in plan as far as texture patterns, even color coding, etc. But for all intents and purposes, this accomplishes what I need, and so I'll select OK. And then using the draw wall function, I can pick my four inch 
or uh, stone veneer wall and I'm just going to position my cursor where I want this to be drawn and I will click to start and I'm going to run it the length of the uh, counter that's back there. Now this is obviously too high and nor did I even move it up to the counter to begin with but I'm actually going to edit this now and I'm going to change this to say 42 inches just simply to lower its height okay and then I can move this into place where I want this to be you know set up next to the actual counter itself. The, uh, the offset of this needs to actually change. I need to edit this and, and offset it down six inches uh, relative to the site because that's where the patio is going to be placed. And if I wanted to return it on either side, I could then come in with the draw select and just, you know, draw another, you know, one down both the left as well as the right hand side for, you know, what we're attempting to create for a border all the way around. And as I said, at this point now, I could come in and add a countertop if I wanted on top of this. And so using the um, draw and cabinet, I can then come in and I can select that I just simply want to freeform a countertop in here. And so at this stage, I'm just going to you know, draw it to the edge of the wall. And I'm just, this is going to be a very, very um, slim line countertop that we're putting in. But when it's placed, you can see that it's just floating up here at this point. I could actually edit that counter and I could off or change its offset, okay, where I want that to be, okay. So in this case, I'm just going to um, offset that up or down, or in my case, I may even move this because it's finding the joists that are there and just simply set it down. And so once I have it, you know, where I need it to be, I will edit this and remove it from the cleanup tab that's there. And as I, I can also come in then using the move and adjust features to actually stretch or adjust the width of this where I'd like this to be actually set. And so that sets up our outdoor kitchen that we have right now um, on the, the actual plan. And um, again, it, textures and so on will come in due time, but uh, this is uh, you know coming together for us. Um, and so let's just save this before moving ahead. And so with the kitchen components, now completed, let's take the 3D shaded view and move it to a full screen by moving it into the previous tab group and a regenerate will show us the kitchen fully on screen. At this point, as has been noted, we've got different colors and shadings representing different texture assignments and so if we take this from the shaded mode to textured mode, we will actually get um, the images of the JPEGs mapped onto the various surfaces. This would now allow us to go in and modify um, the different texture assignments. So for example, using the surface copy paste, we could select the uh, wood texture that is being assigned to the joist and in turn apply that to the beam as well as the posts. We would have the option of doing a surface edit on the actual counter itself and from the listing of materials that is here we could then go through and select a different texture assignment for the actual countertop and then lastly as it pertains to the wall right clicking on the the wall that has been created we can go in and you can see the various options that are available under the stone whether we want to maneuver through these textures that are available or if we want to go to something that's um, from a specific manufacturer we could then also scroll down into their various libraries and then select from the libraries that are available to assign whether we wanted to go with something from a uh, more of a cut stone or if we're looking to get something that's a little more dry stack on the actual plan itself. And so this begins to show us in detail what we are attempting to achieve with the kitchen. 
In our next session, we're going to actually go through and begin to show you how to import a custom symbol from an Exide surface, as well as going in and beginning to lay out uh, a few retaining walls and also some planting beds. And then we'll finish um, the, uh, the, the series up by looking at generating higher resolution three-dimensional models.